In this lecture, we continue our series on uh, beams, and we concentrate on um, extension and bending. Um, as we have seen uh, in the previous lecture, uh, for Euler Bernoulli beams, the principle of virtual work involves only uh, the two bending moments, the normal force, and the twist, uh, the torque, uh, twisting moment. And as such, it is enough for us to model bending moments and uh, normal force and uh, twist. We don't need to explicitly model shear forces. Um, we will see here that once we do that, there is a clear separation, at least for isotropic materials, between torsion and the rest of the tree. So if we recall the displacement field, uh, the displacement field of the beam theory, we had something along the lines of u equals u minus theta that y we had v equals v plus theta z x and we had w equals w plus y theta x minus x theta y and for Euler Bernoulli beams, we had the conditions that theta y is u prime and theta x is minus v prime. So this, these two conditions say that the cross section remains perpendicular to the beam center line. So if we substitute these and then calculate our strains, what we're going to see is that epsilon z would reduce to w prime minus y v double prime minus x u double prime and gamma xz will reduce to minus theta z prime y and gamma yz will reduce to theta z prime x. So for isotropic materials, we know that Shear strains can only cause shear stresses, and normal strains can only cause normal stresses. And as such, we see that normal forces uh, and bending, which correspond to W prime, which is extension, V double prime, which is uh, bending curvature, and U double prime, which is also bending curvature, V double prime bending curvature in the ZY plane, and U double prime is bending curvature in the XZ plane. So these things cause normal uh, strains, which generate normal stresses, while shear, uh, while, excuse me, while twist, which is theta Z, produces shear strains, which produce shear stresses. So essentially, if we consider only normal forces, And bending, we can assume that theta z is zero. So this is no twist. And from that, we are going to get that the only non-zero strain is epsilon z.
and as is usual also uh, for um, as we did in, in plates, we, we assume that in this case the only zero, the only non-zero stress is sigma z. The assumption of only sigma z non-zero and only epsilon z non-zero, uh, these two assumptions are not mutually consistent because of Poisson's ratio, the Poisson effect, but the same as what happened with um, uh, with the plates, this assumption is good enough because essentially since epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma xy are either zero or they are negligible, but sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy are exactly zero, then in the principle of virtual work, whenever we multiply whether one side is zero or the other side is zero doesn't matter. It doesn't co make any contribution. So based on the assumption of only single non-zero normal stress, which is sigma z, we can calculate sigma z to be nothing other than E epsilon z. And this will give us E w prime minus e y v double prime minus e x u double prime. So this gives us the stress distribution over the cross section as a function of the rate of extension and the two bending curvatures. If we recall the definitions of the normal force and bending moments be where n itself was integral over area sigma z the area. Yeah. So substituting for uh, the expression for sigma z we obtain m equals integration over area e the area yep times w prime minus integration of area e x the area u w prime minus integration over area E Y D area V double time. Now let us look at these terms. Um, assuming that Young's modulus is uniform, which would be the case if the beam is made of a single material. Uh, this would be E, the first integral would be E times the integral of the area, which is the total area of the cross section. So this term here is given usually the symbol of EA, although that if the material is not uniform, it is not really a Young's modulus times area, but it's a single number, yeah? W prime. Now, if we look at the second and third terms, if Young's modulus is uniform, the second term becomes integration over area, x d area, which is essentially nothing other than the first moment of area around the y-axis. If we choose the origin of the cross-section to be the centroid, then that first moment of area is going to be equal to zero. And the same goes for the third integral, which is the first moment of area around the x-axis. And if we're talking about centroidal axes, this is also zero. So we end up with a simple relationship that says n equals Ea times w prime. We can repeat the exercise with mx. 
So for example, mx is integration over area sigma z y the area. And if we do uh, the integral, so we get these integrals in the form So, based on our earlier assumption that we are talking about centroidal axes, so the first moment of area is always zero, so this would be zero. Then, if we look at the other terms, we can easily see here that this term here represents, uh, if E is uniform, this is the second moment of area around the x-axis. So this takes the symbol EIX. And this term here is a mixed moment of uh, inertia. So this is this takes the symbol EIXY. We can make a further assumption that not only that the axes are uh, centroidal in the sense that the origin is a centroid, we can also assume that the orientation of the axes is such that uh, we follow the principal axes for which ixy is zero. And this leaves us with a very simple equation that says mx is e i x times v double prime, the negative sign. And similarly, based on the same assumptions, it's not difficult to show that m y equals minus e i y u double prime. So this way, we have found um, a model for normal force bending moments in terms of extension and bending curvatures. So now it is time to go back at the expression of uh, virtual work and remember that we said that theta z is zero, so we don't need to consider the twist term. So we will find here that the virtual work done by internal forces is nothing other than integration of n delta w prime minus mx delta v w prime minus my delta u w prime dz. Substituting from the previous relations, we obtain Ea w prime delta w prime plus E i x v double prime delta v double prime plus E i y u double prime delta u double prime dz. And it is not difficult to see from that by simple integration that the strain energy would take the form one half integration of 
E A W prime squared plus E I X V double prime squared plus E I Y U double prime squared Z and this is the expression of total strain energy uh, of beams under a combination of bending and extension. So the only remaining effect that we have not considered so far is torsion, but torsion is significantly more complicated than either uh, extension or bending because of the existence of shear stresses and shear strains. So we are going to discuss this in a, a separate lecture. Uh, of course, once we have the expression for the total strain energy, now we can use the principle of total minimum total potential energy to derive equations of equilibrium and boundary conditions. And we may also, uh, similar to what we have done uh, with plates, also apply the Raleigh-Rich method uh, in a very straightforward fashion.